Welcome to ePashala PG courses on computer science. Uh, we will see about the next module called XML RPC. The objective of this module is to discuss about the XML RPC model. Uh, we will explain, uh, we will see about the concept of Java based middleware that supports this XML RPC. We will also uh, look into the advantages and disadvantages while developing this XML RPC. So, uh, before going into this XML RPC, we will have a brief overview of RPC. We know that this RPC is a remote procedure call, uh, which is a model that specifies how uh, two cooperating processes that runs in a different nodes uh, in a heterogeneous computer uh, uh, computing environment can communicate and coordinate activities. And this paradigm of uh, RPC uh, is based on the concept of a procedure call. Uh, in any higher level language, uh, higher level programming language. And uh, the semantics of RPC are also identical to the semantics of the traditional procedure call. So, traditionally we make a procedure call by uh, call by value or call by reference. So, this uh, the RPC is also like uh, making a procedure call, but it is going to be a remote procedure call that runs in a different machine. And, uh, the if you look into the difference between the normal procedure call and the remote procedure call. So, this normal procedure call would be using the same memory space and it would be running in a single system, but this RPC takes place between uh, processes on uh, that runs in a client and a server and the two in a heterogeneous computing environment. Now, when you make an ordinary procedure call, we pass parameters by value or we can pass parameters by reference. So, when we pass parameters by value, the copy of it would be placed uh, on the stack uh, and th that can be uh, the value can be used or modified by the procedure, but it would not be reflected in the original variable. But when you pass the reference of the variable or the parameter, we are actually passing the address of the parameter and it is uh, uh, passed to the procedure. So, any use of this parameter within the procedure would actually modify the uh, uh, modify the variable or the parameter uh, in that address. So, that would actually uh, reflect the changes what we make within the procedure. So, what happens with the remote procedure call? The remote procedure call would act like a procedure call, but it would act across the network. So, here the process uh, makes a remote procedure call by pushing its parameters and a return address onto the stack and it would jump to the start of the procedure. So, here the procedure, the remote procedure itself is responsible for accessing and using the network. And once the remote execution is over, the procedure jump back to the back to the return address and now the calling process will uh, then continue, continue with the uh, executing the remaining statements. So, here uh, whenever you make a remote procedure call, this would make a uh, push the parameters and it would go to the start of the procedure, the procedure would execute it uh, and then uh, would return the result back to uh, the calling process or the calling procedure. Now, uh, so what we have uh, seen is uh, this RPC is a remote procedure call that would run between two different systems. Let us take like a client and a server and uh, uh, that would be in a heterogeneous computing environment. So, using this RPC, we can uh, develop a distributed application. So, here uh, and uh, with the RPC, you can also pass parameters and uh, uh, pass parameters to the remote procedure. Uh, the remote procedure would execute and give back the result back to the uh, calling procedure. Now, uh, let us see what is this XML RPC. So, XML RPC is a simple protocol that uses XML messages to perform this remote procedure call. So, uh, this is basically developed, uh, developed uh, through this uh, uh, XML and HTTP, uh, uh, HTTP protocol. Uh, so, here all the requests would be encoded in XML as XML messages and it would be sent via the HTTP protocol. And the response again from the remote procedure would also be encoded in XML format and it would be received through this HTTP protocol in the uh, uh, sender side. So, the, the XML RPC is the foundation or it would be the easiest way to get started with the web services. So, to understand about the web services, let us first understand about the XML RPC. 
So, uh, as I told you XML RPC provides an XML and HTTP based mechanism and that would make a remote procedure call or for making method or function calls across a network. So, it uses the two protocols call XML protocol and the HTTP protocol. So, it uses XML for messaging and, uh, and it makes use of the small vocabulary set of the XML not the entire one and it uses the HTTP to pass the information from a client computer to a server computer. And here we do not have any, uh, any notion of objects nothing to talk about objects here and we have we do not uh, uh, know mechanism for including information that uses other uh, XML vocabularies. So, just the messages are passed by uh, passed as XML messages and HTTP protocol is used to pass the information from one end to the other end. And this kind of mechanism started very early in 1998 and to develop this XML RPC program. Uh, this is a very easiest way to test an RPC, RPC mechanism that is uh, supported, uh, supported by Apache. So, in real applications we do not do directly program the uh, XML statements. So, when you develop an XML RPC we do not write any code in XML and we will be we will in need of an library that library is called as an XML RPC library. Uh, where you have this is an API where you have classes and methods and we will be making some function calls through this library. And uh, coming to working with XML RPC uh, we have Apache's uh, XML project called Apache XML RPC that provides the packages uh, for integrating this XML RPC with Java. So, once we are very uh, convenient working with Java we can uh, test this RPC mechanism um, uh, very uh, easiest way to work with RPC provided by Java. So, we have the package supported by Apache XML RPC. Once you download the packages uh, and have it in your machine, we can easily write an RPC code using this packages using the classes and methods that we can use it from this package. So, Java provides a simple mechanism to test with the XML RPC. And uh, the advantage of this Apache XML RPC, um, we do not, uh, we have seen about RMI, uh, in RMI we have to do the registration process that is uh, the, uh, the client has to register the uh, remote uh, method to the registry. But XML when you come into the XML RPC this provides an automated registration process which would add the methods to the XML RPC server. And we do not, uh, we do not, we write a server program, but we do not need to have a server, uh, uh, you do not write the entire thing. So, we have a built in web server with XML RPC uh, that only uh, speaks XML RPC reducing the need for uh, creating the full servlet, we do not write the entire servlet code for developing. So, we have a built in server called web server uh, that is coming with a package, we will be using it for uh, writing the server code and starting the server. And uh, the one the another thing what you have to do is we have to write a client uh, package that would make a call to the remote uh, methods that would also be very fairly it is very simple. So, to prepare for this XML RPC services and the, there are 4 steps we have to do. The first step we have to develop the function that is going to be used by the client. So, the, the remote function or the remote procedure here we call it as a remote procedure. Uh, that has to be used by the client would be first developed and we have to create the server and we have to register the function to the server and start the server. Now, we will have a client application that would make use of this remote procedure. So, now uh, coming to this uh, XML RPC, let us see an example uh, that would actually help us to understand how this XML RPC is going to, uh, going to be programmed and it will work. So, the first step uh, we have to develop the function the, the remote procedure. So, here we can see that we create a function called circle area. So, the entire thing is basically a Java programming. Uh, once we are very uh, convenient with Java uh, programming language this XML RPC is nothing else, it is very easy to learn. So, we can create a class called area handler within which we will have a method this is the remote procedure circle area that is going to take the radius of the circle and it would return the area of the circle. So, we have written uh, uh, the pi r square 
compute the pi r square and it we would return the uh, area of the circle. So, this method would, uh, would uh, get the radius of a circle and it would return the area of the circle. So, it is a very simple method that is defined within a class called area handler. And now, uh, the next step what you have to do is we have to write a server program. So, in order to write the server program, we have to first import the libraries uh, that is available uh, the uh, that is available with the package, the Apache package. So, here uh, we, we can see that we have to import the package called org.apache.xmlrpc.star and the class which we are going to uh, use within this package xmlrpc package is the web server. So, specifically we have said that we are uh, we will import the class web server from this xml package xmlrpc package. The next one we are going to use a class called xmlrpc. So, these are the two important classes we will use from the package called XML RPC package. So, first step we have to import these libraries before you write the server code. And now we create a server code and we are going to write a registry fun a register function, uh, register the function with the server. So, we write a server called area server, we define a class called area server and now we from the main method we are going to call the method called start server. So, the start server takes one parameter which is the port number we will give it in the command line. So, when you execute the server program we will in the command line we will give the port number where the server would be running. So, we will call a method called start server and you can see that we define a method called start server and we pass the port number. So, within the start server uh, we are going to write a simple code where you are going to instantiate an object for the web server. So, I told you there are two, two things, two important classes you are going to use from the XML RPC package. One the web server uh, class, uh, other one is the uh, XML RPC. So, this is the web server, here we are going to use it, uh, use it. So, web server, we instantiate an object for the web server and here you can see that uh, we, uh, we get the port number from the, in the command line. So, whatever we get it from the command line are going to be string. So, the string has to be converted parse to an integer. So, we use integer dot parse in to parse this convert the string uh, string to integer and we create the web server. No, now this web server would be running in this port number. So, whatever port number you give it in the command line. So, once you do it we are going to bind it. So, we register the, uh, the class under the name called area. So, here uh, to the web server server dot we use a method called add handler. So, the add handler method would now create an instance of the area handler. So, what is area handler? Area, area handler is the function, uh, it is a class which has the function that uh, calculates the, that uh, find out the area of the circle. So, we instantiate an object for that remote uh, procedure, uh, the remote class and then we bind it with a name called area. And once you bind the remote function, we will start the server using the start method. So, remember we have to uh, first create a web server, we have to use the method called add handler to register the function to the server and we have to start the server using the start method. Now, uh, assuming that uh, we have compiled the area server class, uh, so area server is the server class we have created. So, once you compile it, assuming that we have a class file we are going to run the server. So, now the server would be running in the port number 8899. So, uh, what we have done is we have written the remote procedure and we have written a server program, The serv to the server program you have binded the remote procedure. So, once you have the remote procedure binded with the server, uh, server program, we are going to develop the client program. So, the client program uh, we'll call, we need to write the client program which would call the function registered in the uh, server side. So, we will write a simple client program. In order to write the client program, we have to first import all these libraries. The important classes we are going to use, use it in the client program. So, import the package uh, org.apache.xmlrpc. The class which are very useful to write the client program are XML RPC class, then we will use a class called XML RPC client 
and we will also use a class called XML RPC exception to handle the exceptions that are thrown in this client program. So, these are the three things that would be very useful for developing the client program. Now, coming here uh, we write the client program called area client. So, we have the main method. So, first you create an instance of this area client and what we are going to do is we are going to take the uh, radius from the command line when you execute the client program. Now, uh, the command line argument is a string parameter. It is it has to be passed as a double value uh, to the remote procedure because the remote procedure takes the radius as a double value and returns the area as a double value. So, here convert the string use the parse double method of the uh, Java of the uh, of the wrapper class uh, double and then convert the string to a double value. So, now you have a radius which is a double value. Now, this radius uh, with this radius you are going to call the method call area circle. So, this client uh, area client is the client program you are writing it you instantiate an object called client. So, this object dot area circle. So, area circle is the one we, which we are going to uh, see in the next slide. So, you write a program uh, to define the method call uh, area circle and once you call this area circle passing the radius you will get the result. So, the area of the circle would be printed here. So, this area circle has to be defined. So, within this main uh, within this uh, class area client we define a method call we have a method call area circle which would be defined here. So, here you can see that we now write a uh, method we define a method call area circle. So, this in the area circle we will actually create an RPC client XML RPC client. So, I told you that there is a class call XML RPC client using which you create an XML RPC client. So, you create a client uh, by giving the you uh, uh, you need to connect this client to the server. So, you and you have uh, the same server and the client are running in the local host. So, give the local host address and the port number where the server is running. It is running in, in the port number 8899. So, first once you create an uh, uh, client XML RPC client you have to send the double value. So, any value can be sent as a uh, can, uh, can be sent as a vector object. So, what you have to do is you have to create a vector object. So, params is a vector object you are creating it and use the add element method of the vector class to add the double value to the params. So, you have to bind this parameter uh, you have to pass to the remote procedure as a vector vector object. So, use the method call add element and then bind uh, then uh, give your uh, radius uh, that is your the radius that is converted to a double value and add it to the vector. So, once you add it to the vector now you use the method call execute method of the client. So, client is uh, your XML RPC client within this class you have a method call execute. So, the client object dot execute of you have to uh, when you call the server function you have to uh, give the registered function name. So, the registered function name is area and you have to give uh, you also need to know the name of the procedure. So, the name of the procedure is circle area which we have defined there. So, uh, the registered function name is area dot the name of the function is given as circle area and to this uh, function you have to pass the params, params is a vector object. So, you have put the double value within this vector object and you have used it within this execute method. So, once you call this execute method that would actually call the server function would execute it and it would send back the result. So, the result would be an object it is it would be of an object type. So, what you have to do is you have to print it as a double value. So, this object has to be first converted to string. So, you make use of the two string method to convert the object to a string and then again take the string parse it to a double value then you will get an area that is a double value. So, now this function returns the resultant area to the uh, to the previous method that is the method which has called it. So, within the main method you have called the area circle passing the radius. So, this would actually create within this area circle you have created a client program and you have called the remote procedure get back the result convert it to the double value and you are giving back to the main method. So, the client would be actually accessing a remote object just like 
accessing a uh, local procedure, but the procedure is running in the server side. So, now you can see that uh, how this is actually working. So, as I told you the, the this XML RPC combines two mechanisms, two protocols called XML and the HTTP protocol. It is based on the two protocols. Now, uh, when uh, this the client when it gives a request to the remote procedure, um, we, it makes a function call. So, that procedure call would be converted to an XML um, uh, would be converted to an XML message and it would be sent as a HTTP request to the uh, server. So, now when you execute this program you can see that a HTTP request will be generated like this. So, it would be a post uh, type uh, the post type of the HTTP protocol the content length. So, these are the HTTP header that would be added and then uh, the name of the function the name of the function is circle area uh, the registered name is area. So, this would be sent as, as an XML message and uh, the parameter you need to pass to the procedure is also uh, passed as params this is what you have created. So, as an XML messages this would be uh, generated uh, and it would be passed as a HTTP request to the server side. And the resultant uh, if you see uh, if the server properly does all these process it sends back the response back as an HTTP response. So, the client program you will compile it and you will execute it like this you will Java area client is the client program you give the uh, radius as a double value you will get back the result. And uh, now we have seen that this XML how to code an XML RPC it basically works on this model. So, you had a client process you had a server process you write a client program and a server program. So, there would be a client process that makes use of a stub and the stub would actually make use of the uh, network routine the underlying uh, procedures by which it can communicate to the other end which is your server side and in the server side again it makes use of the underlying network routines by which it unmarshals the data send it to the server stub and the server stub would initiate the server process get the result back from the server process and again use the network routine and then uh, transmit or marshals the everything to the client side the client side it would contact the client step through which it would uh, connect to the client process. So, it is an RPC same RPC model by which the client is making a remote uh, uh, procedure call to the server machine. So, the steps are given here. So, what the client does is the client calls the local stub procedure and the stub packages or uh, the parameters into a network message and this is what called as marshalling. And we saw that there is in some networking functions in the OS kernel that would be called by the stub to send the message and the kernel would send the message to the remote system uh, and this may be either connection oriented or connectionless. And now the server stub would respond to this uh, uh, message that is coming to the server side. So, the server stub would unmarshal the arguments from the network message and then it would execute the local procedure procedure call the procedure once gets completed it would return the uh, execution result to the server stub. The server stub would again marshals pack everything and returns the values through the uh, through the network uh, routines that is as a network messages into a network message. The return messages are sent back and the client stub would read back the messages using the network functions. The message whatever received by in the client stub would be unmarshaled and the return values would be sent to the uh, local process that is running in the client side the client program. So, this is what happening when, when a remote procedure is invoked from a client in a server. So, now we have said that uh, there is a stub client side stub and a server side stub. So, the client side stub would connect to the remote machine it would send all the parameters and it would wait for the replies uh, and it would do the right thing to the stack and then it would return it. The server side stub in turn would read the parameters present them in a suitable form to execute the procedure locally and once the execution is completed it would send the results back to the calling process. So, you need to make use of it is the same RPC, RMA all are the same mechanisms remote procedure call mechanism which makes use of a client stub and a server stub. And the basic process for building server uh, would be uh, you will have a server program 
uh, that defines a service interface using an ideal. Ideal is an interface definition language and this ideal would, uh, would specify the params, names and the type for all the server procedures. A, a stub compiler would read the ide, uh, ideal and produces two uh, stub procedures, one for the client side and one for the server side. The server would write a server program and link it with the server side stub and the client would write the a client program and it would link it with the client side stub. So, you, you have a basic server, uh, service, some service that would be binded to the interface definition language and uh, a compiler would, a stub compiler would compile, uh, would read the ideal, whatever service that is binded to the ideal and then would produce two stubs that would be linked to the client side and the server side as stubs, client side stub and the server side stub. Now, the binding is actually done uh, in the server side. So, RPC binding is done in the server side. So, the server when it starts up, it, it exports its interface. Uh, identifying itself to the network name server and telling the local runtime its dispatcher address. And the client before issuing any calls, it has to import the server which causes the RPC uh, runtime to look up the server uh, through the services that are offered by the server and contact the requested server to set up a connection. So, this is how a binding happens between the client and the server. Now, this is an example of the request, how the request is sent. Uh, from the client to the server side. So, as I told you when a client program gets executed, it would send the request as an HTTP request. So, the entire message would be the entire whatever uh, the, the function name, the server, uh, the service that is running in the server side and the parameters that has to be passed or converted to XML messages and this XML message would be sent as an HTTP request to the server. And uh, what the header, what the requirements in the header, what are the important thing we need to have in the header. So, here uh, the format of the URI is not specified, e even it could be empty and uh, if it is actually handling a mixture of uh, incoming HTTP request, then we need to have the URI to route the, route the request properly to the other end. Otherwise, the URI is not uh, very essential, but uh, the user agent and the host must be specified and the content type should be uh, text or XML and the content length must be specified and it should be correct. So, now uh, the why we go for XML RPC, the advantages are uh, the fire, firewalls, firewall software can watch for post whose content type is text bar XML. Uh, so, it has an uh, inbuilt firewall and we, the XML RPC is also doing a discoverable process. Uh, so, it, it should be possible for the HTML coder to, uh, the, to be able to look at a file containing an uh, procedure call and understand what it is doing and it is very easy to implement, this, uh, this uh, mechanism is very easy, it should be very easy to implement. But uh, the disadvantages of uh, this mechanism XML RPC, so here we can see that uh, uh, it can transmit uh, uh, transmit an obese in its message size, it can be uh, any in the type of data and it transmit messages which lacks statefulness and it also incurs a channel bottleneck and compared to SOAP, this XML RPC lacks both uh, security mechanisms and a robust object model. So, you do not pass as objects, you pass as uh, messages. As a data representation, XML RPC is very slow and it is very uh, cumbersome when you see the uh, request how it is sent and it is incomplete compared to the uh, native uh, programming language mechanism like Java. So, these are the basic disadvantages of XML RPC, but it is very uh, to learn about RPC, it is where this mechanism is the basic uh, uh, basic one by which you can easily know how uh, RPC is working. So, we can uh, summarize that. Uh, this model we have uh, we have seen that how an XML uh, what is XML RPC and we can uh, we have seen that how this XML RPC, uh, RPC is working and we, we, can, we have also seen about the advantages and disadvantages with XML RPC. We saw a small example to work with XML RPC. So, these are the references. Thank you.